So the first thing that we're gonna look at is something called tangent line approximation. Another name for it is linearization. Um, so we use tangent line approximation when we want to estimate the value of a function uh, using the value from the tangent line. So we say let f of x be a function for which we can find a tangent line at some point x equals a. Uh, the equation of the tangent line we'll call L of x, this is where the linearization idea comes in, uh, is equal to L of x equals f of a plus uh, f prime at a times the quantity x minus a. So again, this is all kind of centered around the point x equals a. Now this right here is really just kind of a fancy way of rewriting a slope intercept form. Uh, so this is like y, this is the y1. Here is our slope. Remember that the derivative just represents the slope. And then it's going to be x minus x sub 1 here. Uh, so the really only thing that's different is we've taken y sub 1 and we've added it to the other side. And it really is just that when we're talking about linearization. So it's just point slope form where we've added the y sub 1, the y intercept to the other side, or the y coordinate, sorry. Um, so this graph here shows the graph of a function, y equals f of x, and then the tangent line to it at the point a, f of a. And so we can see if we were looking at this graph here, right, at values really, really, really close to A, right around A, there's very, very, very little distinction between where the graph of F is and where the graph of the tangent line is. It's basically indistinguishable in that little region there. Obviously, as you get further and further out, the, um, the distance between the tangent line and the curve itself varies, right, or it gets larger. But really close to the point A, that there's not much of a difference. So we can actually use the tangent line to get a pretty good estimation for the value of the function. Uh, and this is helpful because sometimes it's easier to just plug into the equation of a line rather than into some like crazy complex formula or equation. Okay, so we wanna determine the linear approximation for the function, the cube root function at x equals eight. And we're gonna use this to help us approximate uh, the cube root of 8.05, and then the cube root of something a little further away, 25. And we'll kind of see what the difference is at that point. Okay, so let's go ahead and first uh, kind of try and write the equation for the tangent line, because that's what we're gonna be using to approximate. So if we wanna write the equation of the tangent line, we need a slope and a point. So we already have the point there, and the slope is going to come from, um, the derivative of our function here. So we know that our function f of x is the cube root of x. So what is its derivative? So f prime of x is going to be. So the cube root is the same as x to the one third power. So using the power rule, we get one third x to the negative two thirds power. Uh, and then if we were to kind of simplify that, we're gonna get one over three times the cube root of x squared. So that's going to be the function for the derivative. And we want to know the derivative at this point here because that's what we're using to write our equation for our tangent line. So what is uh, f prime at eight? So we can go ahead and plug that in. So it's one over three times the cube root of eight. And then all of that is being squared. Uh, we know the cube root of eight is two. So that's one over three times two squared. Uh, two squared is four times three is 12. So the slope uh, to this line at the point 8, 2 is 12. So if we were writing the linearization, right, the equation of this line, it's gonna be y equals, I remember the y coordinate we added to the other side, so it's two plus the slope, which is 1 12th times x minus the x coordinate there. So that's the equation that we're gonna to use to help us estimate, so let's actually, we can call this L of x, right? So that's the equation that we're going to use to estimate uh, these different values here for the linearization. Okay, so let's do our tangent line approximation at uh, 8.05 for this. So what is L of 8.05? So basically we're gonna be plugging in 8.05 anywhere we have our X here. So that's going to be two plus 1 12th times 8.05 minus eight, uh, which is just gonna be 0 0.05. And if you were to go and uh, plug this into your calculator, if you went and plugged this into your calculator, you'd get that this is about uh, 2.004, and we're using this, again, remember, we're using this 
to estimate the cube root of uh, 8.05. Now, if you actually plugged into your calculator the cube root of 8.05, what would we get? Um, we get that the cube root of 8.05 is 2.004158 and so on. Um, so it's actually a really pretty good approximation. And that should make sense, right? If we're looking at 8.05, so 1 20th away from 8, we're really, really close. And you can see that that's going to be not really far off from our line here. But if we were using something like 25 to uh, find the cube root of 25 using this, so we're still anchored around this point, right? And so now we're out here trying to estimate the value at 25. So you can see clearly, right, there's some distance between these. So we should expect a little bit larger error. So it's going to be 2 plus a 12th times uh, 25 minus 8. So what is that? So that's going to be 1 12th times 17 plus 2, which is going to give me 3.416. Right, so this is what we are using to approximate the cube root of 25. But if you were to actually plug in the cube root of 25 into your calculator, you would see that the cube root of 25 is actually more closely approximated as uh, 2.924. So that's it to three decimal places. So you can see there's quite a big difference here, right? It's about uh, half of a value here. And that's because as we get further away from the point at which our tangent line is anchored around, the distance between our tangent line and the curve itself is growing here. Um, so that's why you want to use linearization for points that are really close to the point that your uh, tangent line is anchored around. But you still, still could use it as a, to approximate uh, things that are a little further out. It just won't be as accurate. Okay, so we want to kind of do this again for this time for a cosine function. It says we're going to do this without a calculator, but we're actually going to use a calculator because uh, I don't know I don't know the exact value for uh, pi over two as a decimal because we don't know the exact value. Uh, so let's go ahead and try and write the equation for this. Uh, so we're our point is at pi over two, so we need to know what is. Um, what is the y value there? So what is f of pi over 2? So that's the cosine at pi over 2 is 0. So we're anchored at the point pi over 2 comma 0 for our tangent line. Uh, what is the derivative? Just the general derivative. So we're taking a look at the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine of x. And the derivative at pi over 2 is negative sine of pi over 2. So we know the sine at pi over 2 is 1, but it's going to be negative 1 there. So our equation, so let's go ahead and write our equation. So let me change the color here, go with green. So we'll say L of x. So the linearization is um, the y coordinate, which in this case is just 0, plus our slope, which is going to be negative 1 times x minus the x coordinate, which is pi over 2. So this is the equation that we use to estimate uh, things close to um, pi over 2 for cosine, right? This is our approximation in this. So let's go ahead and evaluate at 1.75. So I don't need this to worry about the 0 here. So it's going to be negative 1 times 1.75 minus pi over 2. Uh, if I distribute the negative 1 through, that's going to give me negative 1.75 and then plus pi over 2. Now, I don't really know what pi over 2 is as a decimal, so I'm going to just plug this into my calculator to see what I actually get. So negative 1.75 plus uh, pi over 2. If we plug this into our calculator, we get that um, using the linearization or tangent line approximation, we get that it is about negative 0 0.179. Now, how does that compare to the actual value of cosine at 1.75? Well, the actual value of cosine at 1.75, if we were to plug this into our calculator, is roughly negative 0 0.178. So we're pretty close. So the next topic we're going to look at is something called differentials. Uh, the idea of linearization kind of leads us into differentials. 
Um, differentials essentially are just very small changes in x and very small changes in y. Um, they've also been called infinitesimals uh, because it is like an infinitely, generally it's an infinitely small change in x or y. Um, and these are going to play a huge role, differentials play a huge role um, when we come into integration in our, um, in our next chapter. So what is a differential? So first, if we let y equal f of x be a differentiable function, that's uh, important, has to be able to take the derivative, then we say that the differential of x, uh, which is just denoted by dx, is an independent variable, so it, there's just like change in x, and then that the differential of y, which is a, uh, it's going to be a dependent variable, is denoted by this. So the value of the differential of y is found by taking the derivative of our function at some value of x times the differential of x. And this definition is actually pretty nice. It's actually kind of easy to uh, to remember because if you imagine just dividing both sides by dx, you get that dy over dx is equal to f prime of x. Now, technically this isn't um, totally mathematically sound, um, but this shows that the two different, um, these two different notations that we've used for derivative, right? This is the derivative of our function. And again, this is the uh, Leibniz notation for derivative. And that's actually part of why Leibniz developed his notation like this, is so that we could get this, uh, this sense of what's happening here with differentials like that. So you can basically just say that dy is isolating the dy, the differential y is like isolating the dy in this notation here, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and try and use this to uh, evaluate some change. So basically what it shows is it shows us uh, the change in y given some x value and uh, the amount of change that is happening with x. Okay, so how do we approach this? So there's two ways that you can do this. Uh, the first way is you can take the derivative with respect to x of everything and then multiply by the dx from the bottom. And you would use the Leibniz notation when you're doing the derivative. You don't want to use like y prime or anything like that. You would use the dy dx. Um, or you can take what we call like a uh, just the derivative with respect to y. So it would be like a dy, you'd get the differential of y, and then you can take the differential of x of that whole side since it's just everything in terms of x. Uh, and in order to do that, you'd have to have the variables separated. So I'm going to first show you, and it's, it's really not any different. It just kind of is what you choose in the end uh, to do. Do you want to multiply by a dx in the end, or do you just want to tack on a dx times your whole quantity when you're done taking the derivative of these things here. So I'm going to do it the first way. So if I take the derivative I, of this, so dy dx is equal to 5x to the fourth plus 2. Since I want to find dy by itself, I could multiply both sides by dx here. And essentially what I'm going to do is multiply by dx like this. So those will end up canceling. And I'm going to get then that um, the differential of y is going to equal 5x to the fourth plus 2 times the differential of x. Okay, and so this is our equation that we had from the uh, previous definition. And we want to evaluate this. We want to find the value of dy given that x is 1 and then the differential of x is 1 100th there. So we can just plug in. So let me just do this here in a different color. Uh, so dy is equal to 5 times 1 to the fourth plus 2, all of this times 0 0.01. Uh, what is this? So that's 1 to the fourth is 1 times 5, so that's 7 times 0 0.01, so that's going to be 0 0.07. So the change in y is going to be 0 0.07 uh, for a, a change in x of 0 0.01 for this function around x equals one. So that's essentially what this is saying, is that the y value in our tangent line is changing by 0 0.07 units if the change in x, like if we move 0 0.01 units away from one around this function. So that's what this is saying here. And that's kind of what we're using differentials for, is it's again to help us with estimating change, right? 
So if we have a function that's differentiable at x equals a, the approximate change of the value of our function, right? So again, we're estimating the change in our function when x changes from a to a plus the differential. So we're just moving right or left some small amount is going to be equal to the differential of our function. Uh, so it's going to be the derivative of our function at the original point that we're anchored around times the differential that we moved, right? Um, so this basically all just comes from kind of what we were talking about before. So basically, if we want to find the change, right? So this here, this like line here represents the df. It's the change in our function in the linearization, right? So it's the, um, the change, the difference in our tangent line. And you can see that that is not always going to be exactly the same as the value of our uh, change in our function. And so that's why we want to try and pick values that are close to a here, right? Because then the change is separated. So this is the actual change. This distance here is the actual change, where this distance here is the uh, differential change. So this last example, we want to find the uh, we want to use the differential of a to estimate the increase in a circle's area when the radius of a circle changes from five meters to five point one meters. Okay, so first, what is the area of a circle? So we know that the area of a circle is going to be pi times the radius squared. And if we want to take the differential, find the differential of a. So in this case, I'm going to do the derivative, um, but just using differential. So I'm not going to multiply both sides by um, dr in this case. I'm just going to take the partial derivative here. So the derivative of a is just going to be the differential of a here. And then this is all in terms of r, so we're going to take the derivative here, so it's going to be 2 pi r, and then all of this is going to be multiplied by our differential of r here. You can see that it wouldn't be any different if I were to just take the derivative with respect to r, right? because we would have had da over dr, and then I just multiply by dr. Okay, so first, a couple important things to note here, right? So what is r and what is dr? So r is always, or the value that you go in here, is always going to be the one we start at. So it's going to be 5. So in this case, r is 5. And the differential of r, or the change in r, is the difference between these. So 5.1 minus 5, so dr is going to be 5.1 minus 5, uh, which is 0 0.1. So we can go ahead and plug in all of that information. So we get that dA, uh, the differential of a, is going to be 2 pi times r, which is 5, times the differential, which is 0 0.1. Uh, so 2 times 5 is 10 times pi. So 10 times a tenth is just 1. So we're actually just going to get pi. So it's going to change by, uh, the area is changing by estimated pi square meters. Now, how is that? how does that actually compare to the real change in the area? So we can actually figure this out. So let's, let's just take a look. It didn't ask us to do this, but I just want to take a look at what is the actual change. So what is the actual change? So to find the actual change, I would just find the area at the new size, and I would subtract the area of the original size. So what is the area at 5.1, uh, when the radius is 5.1 meters? So that's going to be pi times 5.1 squared. And then the area when it was 5 meters is going to be pi times 5 squared. Uh, 5.1 squared, if we plug this into our calculator, what do we get? So 5.1 squared is 26.01. So we get 26.01 pi minus uh, 25 pi. So if we take the difference of this, you're going to get 1.01 pi is the actual change in the area. So the actual change is... 1.01 uh, .01 pi meters squared. So I would say that this is a pretty good estimation, right? It's only off by 1 100th of pi.